so in this video we'll talk about different causes of hearing loss so first of all hearing loss is divided into two types so the first one is conductive hearing loss and the second one is sensory neural hearing loss so conductive hearing loss is when there is any impaired conduction any kind of damage to the ear okay so some kind of damage to the ear which will you know uh, lead to impaired conduction which is going to lead to con uh, conductive hearing loss whereas sensory neural hearing loss is the is a uh, problem with sensory neural that is the nerve all right so the nerve that supplies to the uh, ear is the cr eighth cranial nerve right the vestibular cochlear cranial nerve so any damage to this nerve is going to lead to sensory neural hearing loss so the ear conditions could be any kind of foreign bodies in the ear such as you know uh, wax or any kind of foreign bodies insect peas or vegetables or anything all right and if there's any infection in any part of the ear all right it could be otitis externa or otitis media anything uh, you know affecting the ear uh, other conditions it would include tympanosclerosis otosclerosis you know again affecting the ear so cerumen wax foreign body any kind of foreign body otitis externa uh, perforated tympanic membrane tympanosclerosis osteoma that is the bone tumors in the ear and large exostosis all these would lead to conductive hearing loss whereas sensory neural hearing loss so uh, the first and main thing is press bicuses where you know uh, there is a elderly male patient who has degenerative nerve issue therefore his you know eighth, eighth cranial nerve has probably been degenerated because of which he is unable to hear from you know bilaterally both the sides noise trauma trauma so whenever you you know uh, do ex uh, do excessive things to your nerves your nerves are bound to be damaged right and mechanical trauma meniere's disease where there's going to be a build up of endolymph here which is going to sit on this eighth cranial nerve compressing it therefore this nerve is going to be damaged here and other causes would be ki any kind of neoplasms especially the main thing that we have to remember is acoustic neuroma which is also a differential diagnosis to many many years disease so in acoustic neuroma there is a cranial nerve uh, there is a tumor in the cerebellopontine angle which will compress the 8th and the usually 7th and 5th also with the 8th cranial nerve so that is going to lead to sensory neural hearing loss medications medications any kind of ototoxic medications such as especially amino glycosides all right you have to remember amino glycosides so all these mycin drugs okay so uh, gentamicin streptomycin all these m i c i n drugs we, uh, are ototoxic uh, these are all amino glycosides so you can remember it as mice in the ear all right so mice in the ear that is going to cause ototoxicity autoimmune diseases infections and neoplasms these will compress the cranial nerve therefore leading to sensory neural hearing loss so these are all about the causes of hearing loss now let's move on to what one does what one what one has to do when there is any kind of trauma to the ear so if it is a mild trauma such as you know uh, the patient has only pain and redness okay that uh, he must have had some kind of uh, fight with his with one of his close friends and the friend ha has hit him on his ear all right uh, so uh, the pain the patient presents with slight pain and redness but there is no swelling okay so the tympanic membrane is normal therefore there is no edema so that uh, in that case you will just give the patient some kind of analgesics such as nsaids or paracetamol or any kind of pain relief all right and if there is a little uh, you know uh, some hematoma okay so if there is some swelling but there is no tympanic membrane perforation or hearing loss so uh, the ear has not been affected it's just uh, some kind of edema is present but that the ear is still fine it is still healthy so in that case uh, it should it is most probably a small uh, hematoma and in that case you would do uh, you would uh, do a incision and drainage and give the patient some oral prophylactic antibiotics so in case of a small hematoma as you can see here you will just have to you know give a small incision and drain all the whatever clot is there whatever hematoma is there you just have to drain it out and then give the patient some oral antibiotics all right so this is the hematoma takes 
and if it is a large hematoma or if there is any kind of uh, tympanic membrane perforation you do nothing but ENT referral because now this is out of our hands all right so this is how we manage uh, your trauma patient all right thank you